Hello and welcome to another flight training video using X-Plane. Before I get started I have to tell you that I absolutely do not care which VPN provider you use but for some reason today every single YouTube video has to start with people telling me which VPN provider that they use. So in keeping with that weird custom, I use Müllwatt, but I don't give a crap what you use because I'm not sponsored by anyone other than Austin Meyer and he doesn't care what VPN you use either. Alright, with that out of the way, the other thing to keep in mind about this video is that I'm not showing x 12. I'm showing x 12 physics in a simulator that uses x 11 DSFs, x 11 roads, x 11 windsock, x 11 power lines, yada yada yada. Most importantly, x 11 ground with x 12 trees on it. So the video is about showing a bit of physics code that I wrote and it's not about showing clouds or rain or anything because I didn't write the code for those. Uh, there's plenty of other promotional videos showing the clouds and the rain and the sunset and so on. So, uh, yeah, go watch those. So the roads or whatever look like x 11 roads because that's what they are in my installation right now. So anyone who complains about that in the comment section can sort right off. So if you want to complain about the grass or the buildings or the roads or whatever, you can do that on some forum, but I'm going to nuke your comment here. Alright, with that said, let's go into physics. Uh, for that, we're going to the Western Carolina Regional Airport in the mountains of, uh, well, Western North Carolina. If we look at the approach plate for the RNF GPS Runway 8 approach into that airport, we find in the briefing strip a symbol here, a snowflake with a minus 8C next to it. That means it's a cold temperature restricted airport. Um, and if you look down in the minimum section of this approach, you notice it I the approach does not provide vertical guidance. It's either LP or LNAV. Um, there's no LPV, there's no LNAV, VNAV, which means um, your temperature, no, your altitude restrictions here, you have to meet with barometric altitude. You don't have a glide path. The GPS is going to provide an advisory glide path, but that's advisory only, so the only thing that's authoritative is this barometric altitude here, 4200 at the final approach fix, and 3980 at the LP minimum until the missed approach point, and those have to be read off the barometric altimeter, and with this snowflake in the briefing strip, you know you can only do this uh, up until uh, minus 8C at the airport, and if it's colder at the airport, um, then you have to apply temperature correction. Note that this minus 8C refers to the temperature reported at the airport that you get from AWOS. So it's not the temperature while you're up there at 6,000 feet. At 6,000 feet it can be much colder than minus 8. So this minus 8 refers to the temperature reported at the airport. Alright, so if it's below minus 8 we have to apply cold weather correction. Um, with the FAA charts, you have to dig a bit in the chart supplement to find the table for that. If you use Jeppesen charts instead, um, they supply it for you right there. So the Jeppesen chart doesn't have a snowflake in the briefing strip. You have to read it. It says here under point three, cold temperature, altitude correction required at or below minus 8C. And to do that, you uh, refer to the table here, the cold temperature correction table. I don't know why Navy Graph puts it under taxi. It should be under ref. Um, but for some reason, Navy Graph decided to put it here under the taxi chart. So it's next to the uh, airport diagram. Anyway, um, why this is important, let's uh, go into x and let's uh, look at how that works in x -Plane. So we are here on the ground at the uh, Western Carolina Regional Airport. You see uh, the airport elevation is 1698, so 1700 for all intents and purposes. 2992 is our default altimeter setting. And if I go into the weather section, uh, weather settings now, and I make it really cold, uh, yeah, so it needs to be below minus eight. So let's make it minus 20, let's make it really cold. Um, that works out to an ISA correction of minus uh, 31 at the airport. Uh, note that this value here just changed, the sea level pressure changed, even though the altimeter setting is still 2992. 
or 1013. Uh, we haven't changed the altimeter setting at the airport, but what X-Plane 12 does with you changing the temperature profile, it uh, changes the atmosphere, uh, and that includes the atmosphere under the airport, the atmosphere, so to speak, absorbed by the ground already, um, to a sea level pressure of, uh, works out to 1021 here. So even though our altimeter setting stays fixed at 1013, we have changed uh, the sea level pressure under us uh, to 1021 so that the temperature gradient works out um, as, uh, as we can see. So if I apply those changes, and uh, we now go from plus 11 to minus 20 C. Uh, you see the altimeter hasn't changed. It's still indicating 1700 uh, field elevation at 2992, which is uh, what we expect. All right, so if I'm flying the approach now, listening to the AWOS, and I know it's holy crap, it's minus 20. So um, I need to apply a temperature correction to my uh, final approach fix altitude. So let's do that. Um, the uh, altitude I crossed the final approach fix at is 4,200 and the, uh, that's uh, 2518, so 2,500 over airport elevation. So I enter the correction um, table with uh, minus 20, minus 20 at the airport and uh, 2,500 here. So that works out to, uh, I guess, a little over 300, 300 and a little bit. Um, of a correction factor that I need to apply. So in order to uh, fly at 4,200 true altitude, I need to fly at 4,500 and something um, indicated altitude on the altimeter. So uh, let's see how this uh, works out and explain. So for that, I'm just going to, uh, well, I'm just going to put us in the air here at 100 knots and I'm going to pull us back to where the uh, final approach fix is. Uh, there's Ruji, that's the final approach fix, so I'll put us out here at the 4,200 uh, altitude, and I'm just going to unfreeze the sim here. Uh, well, of course, I killed the autopilot, and I'm just setting the autopilot to hold um, zero vertical speed. All right, if I look at the map here, we know the, air, we, the airplane is at 4,200 and a little bit, true altitude, and the indication on the altimeter is, well, about 300 more than the true altitude. So the altimeter indicates too much. If we were flying 4,200 on the altimeter, we would be considerably below the 4,200 where we need to be. So I need to apply the correction of 300 something and flying 4,500. I actually am at uh, 4,200 true altitude. So exactly 4,200 true altitude here puts me at about 4,500. Uh, interestingly enough, if you load the approach into the GPS, um, you will notice that the GPS advisory glide path goes through exactly 4,200 at the final approach fix, um, no matter what altimeter setting, no matter what um, temperature it is. So if you just follow the GPS advisory glide path, you will cross the final approach fix at those 4,500 or whatever indicated altitude um, because the advisory glide path from the GPS is not affected by the temperature. All right, and um, let's see how this uh, works in the summer. So now we are flying the citation. We are flying at flight level uh, 240, so 24,000 feet barometric uh, altitude. And uh, let's uh, make it summer now and change the temperature uh, at the airport to something like 35 C. So we're going to a plus 23 ISA atmosphere. The sea level pressure has now been lowered to 1,009 uh, hectopascals to again meet the altimeter setting of 1,013 hectopascals at the airport. Um, let's see what that does to our altimeter. And um, obviously now, whoops, there you see, we lost about 2,000 feet of indicated um, indicated altitude here. There we go, back at 24, flight level 240. So, what happens here if you're flying at 240, 
in the summer, flight level 240, barometric altitude, you are actually flying higher um, than you think you are because you are flying a higher true altitude than the indicated altitude here. Uh, so, of course, your next question is, uh, well, if I'm flying with other people on BATSIM or Pilot Edge or IVEO, um, and they have a different simulator that doesn't simulate this, um, won't we be at uh, the wrong altitude all the time? Uh, and the answer is yes, but X-Plane provides a, a data ref that the um, uh, IVEO client or the Pilot Edge client can query, and you can just ask X-Plane uh, what the temperature error of the altimeter is right now, and we see helpfully here right now it's minus 627 feet. So um, right now uh, we are flying 630 feet uh, higher than we think we are, and um, of course this data ref could be used by, by VATSIM um, to get you to a network compatible altitude, so to speak. All right, that's uh, all I have to say about X-Plane 12 Atmosphere Physics. I hope you enjoyed that.